Kala Lutfi Mulamar um, has over 30 years of volunteer experience with organiza organizations, including the Arab Palestine Association, uh, Arab Community Centre of Toronto, uh, Urban Alliance for Race Relations, uh, Canadian Ethnocultural Council, uh, Ontario Committee for Fairness in Policing, and the Coalition Against Israeli Apartheid. So uh, I think probably a lot of us know uh, Khaled in this room. Um, he, was, he served as a board member for the Immigration and Refugee Board from 1994 to 2005, adjudicating on refugee claims. And he's been serving as a national president of the Canadian Arab Federation since 2006. Uh, Khaled holds a Master's of Business Administration from U of T, from this institution, Bachelor of Science degree in Mathematics and a Diploma in Education from the American University of Beirut, and he's going to be speaking about the government's attempts to undermine democracy. I remember 30 or 40 years ago, we used to be standing outside in the cold while the Zionists were holding their warm meetings inside. So, so I'm happy to see that it's, it's the other way around. <laughs> Now, Arab Canadians have been uh, facing challenges and harassment in the last few years, but this is not a unique situation. Uh, this, has, uh, this has evolved with this government, which is now targeting everybody. Uh, since, since it came into power in 2006, the government of Canada has systematically undermined democratic institutions and practices has eroded the protection of free speech and other <coughs> fundamental human rights, has deliberately set out to silence the voices of organizations or individuals who raise concerns about government policies or disagree with their positions, and has weakened Canada's international standing as a leader in human rights. And a good example of that is what happened during the G20 uh, you know, uh, in June, where we see how the government made the city of Toronto an, an occupied city. You know, they brought 20,000 policemen across the country. They, uh, they violated the civil rights of 1,100 citizens. Uh, the police was given extra powers. And uh, unfortunately and regrettably, none of the political parties really stood up firmly against uh, this government's behavior during the G20. Now, we, we have a government that, uh, that uh, portrays everything uh, in the same manner that the Bush administration, uh, you know, evil versus good, uh, us versus them. And as, as a result of that, they will not tolerate any diversity of opinions, and they are trying to force upon all Canadians conformity, which is something contrary to Canada's uh, culture. Uh, we even have as, uh, diplomats, leaders of government uh, agencies, senior military officers in the RCMP and other places, scientists in Environment Canada have been pressured to obey <coughs> a law of silence and have been censored from communicating with the Canadian public. At the same time, this is a government that has been slowly uh, eroding many of the civil rights and practices which existed in Canada. I don't know if you recall, but uh, a couple of years ago, there were amendments made to the Immigration Refugee Protection Act, which gave extra powers to the minister to determine who can become eligible to immigrate to Canada. In, in the past, the system was based on a point system. If you met, if, if, if you acquired 67 points, you would be granted permanent resident status. Now the law was changed so that it says a person may be granted permanent resident status, which means that the consular officer in the offices across the world can decide, even if you meet the point system requirements, to reject you. And you have no means of appealing because the law was changed from should be granted to may be granted. So now you have no means of appealing the decision. At the same time, the government has engaged in practices which seem to discriminate amongst uh, citizens and how they're being treated. 
uh, if somebody uh, like uh, 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 the, the woman who was uh, jailed in Mexico for, uh, for drug uh, abuses, uh, I forgot her name. Brenda. Brenda. Brenda Martin, yeah. Uh, the, the, the Prime Minister intervened personally and they sent a private jet to bring her to Canada. Yet citizens like uh, Abu Sufyan uh, Abdurazak, who is of Sudanese descent, he was uh, stuck in Sudan based on false information provided by CSIS and they wouldn't bring him back. And the same thing happened to Saad Haji Mahmoud, who is a Somali citizen, Canadian citizen. She was also stuck in, in Kenya and the government refused to bring her back. In all of these, and Omar Khadr is another case of a Canadian child soldier who has been sitting in Guantanamo, the only one from a Western country where the, his government has not intervened <coughs> to bring him back, and Canada has done nothing. In all of these cases, uh, citizens had to go to court to force the government to apply the court. This is, you know, this is a strange situation. Instead of having a government that upholds the law, our citizens now have to go to court to force the government to abide by the law. And in all these cases, the lawyers had to go to court to force the government to bring these citizens back. And in the case of Omar Khadr, the government still uh, did not do anything. So these are, at the same time, they are proposing a bill, a refugee bill uh, change, which would create two types of refugees. Now, if you come as part of a group, you can be detained for 12 months. You will you have to wait uh, uh, 10 years to, or 5 years to, to get your permanent residence. You cannot sponsor your family like any other refugee claimant. So they're, they're creating two types of refugees also. And they prorogued Parliament because they didn't like uh, the findings uh, 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 that proved that uh, the government was aware of torture taking place in Afghanistan. And most importantly, they started to slash funding to all these NGOs in Canada. <coughs> Kairos is, is one of the most uh, famous ones, which is a, a ecumenical group representing 11 main Canadian churches and they cut funding to that because they disagreed with its stand on Palestine. They, they actually started this process much earlier because they cancelled the court challenges program. The court challenges program allowed marginalized and vulnerable groups to challenge government's decisions when they violated the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. We in the Kenya Federation used that, uh, that, uh, that option, uh, which meant that our lawyers were funded through the Court Challenges Program to challenge the security certificates which were in place at that time. Now we cannot use that option, and many groups who, who, uh, who see their human rights and civil rights being violated in Canada cannot use the Court Challenges Program. 